Good morning everyone and welcome to our 2020 Symposium. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land. Like many of you today, I'm joining this Symposium from the lands of the Darug people. We pay our respects to Elders, past, present and emerging, remembering that this was, is and always will be Aboriginal land. We recommit ourselves to the cause of justice for Australia's First Nations people, particularly to work together for better outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait children and all young people through education. In acknowledging country, I recall that earlier this year, the Australian government, like other governments before it, conceded it had not met closing the gap targets on school attendance, literacy and numeracy. This means that not only are outcomes much worse than they are for other Australian children, we're not even meeting some of the targets that we have set for ourselves to close the gap. Because we know that we also need to do better for these young people, CEDP is now working towards our first reconciliation plan. This is a good place to begin today as we look to the future and take action to serve those most in need. It reminds us that what we do today and tomorrow matters. By now, you are used to me talking about the fierce urgency of the now. Those are the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. I noted with interest that in his very recent encyclical Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis also looked to Martin Luther King for inspiration. Perhaps we can hear this when Pope Francis asks us to dream together. For Australians, the idea of dreaming together also evokes Aboriginal spirituality. I can't go on without acknowledging what a year this has been and your extraordinary work, not just during COVID-19 crisis, but through the floods and the bushfires last summer as well. We've all learned so much about ourselves and about each other. For me, one of the most important lessons is that our faith in our school leaders, our teachers, the education profession, and in the students and the supportive families to lead transformation is more than justified. The COVID-19 pandemic has fundamentally transformed our world and schools are taking a lead role. We will find the practice and the solutions. We're building robust communities that encourage innovation and the kids have never been happier to be there. Some who resist change in education will say that the community is not ready for this. Those voices are far from the front line. As Mahatma Gandhi, another of Pope Francis's Fratelli Tutti inspirations told us, be the change you want to see in the world. Not only are schools ready to change, we already are the change. We've shown that we are up to any challenge. So what's next? For all of us, in just a few months, most of what was familiar about schooling was flipped, learning hacked, and professional learning fast-tracked. New systems and infrastructure were built. Opportunities negotiated, families without access to technology and connectivity supported, and we found different ways to communicate and collaborate. We need to continue to identify where there is need in our communities and our advocacy on behalf of those students and their families. Both before and during COVID-19, I've been so impressed by the staff dedication, creativity and resilience. The COVID-19 crisis has caused even the traditionalists to take another look at the possibilities. Digital disruption was a reality sector-wide. In a digital world, we need to keep using digital tools, including when it comes to teaching. Schools no longer have a monopoly on learning, but they still matter so much in the lives of students and their family as well. If we listen to what kids told us about missing school, it's about learning and community. They didn't just miss their mates, it was also the support they received from their teachers. The next normal should see more blended learning with face-to-face -face instructions supported by smarter use of the best technological tools available to teachers. After COVID-19, some things will never be the same again, and they shouldn't be. I also want to highlight the need for us to continue to work together on practical solutions for those who are disadvantaged by the digital divide. 
I'd like to invite you to contribute to our new system blog, Disruptive Voices. This forum for ideas, innovation and inspiration is another chance to capture what we learnt this year and use it in the future for the good of all, particularly students and teachers. We believe that everyone is a leader and transforming learning and teaching is our shared work. We've named this new blog for the series of online conversations Mora and the learning team led as part of the preparations for the return of students to the classroom post lockdown. The experience of this year has been personal so many ways. For Sue and I, this is including being separated from some of our family overseas, my grandkids who live in the Northern Hemisphere were unable to attend school for more than six months. I watched on as their dad took on the leading role of looking for interesting ways to keep them growing as learners, including planting a veggie garden and walking in the woods. It was a powerful reminder of the role of parents as first educators of their children. Perhaps just as importantly in our work, a reinforcement that learning is relational. As Catholic educators, we bring our faith to this also. In this engagement with the learners, we see Christ in these relationships and in the very act of teaching itself. Education is learning how to learn. When we teach children how to learn with a focus on contents that's interesting to them, they are engaged. Needless to say, an activity like planting a veggie garden can be a great way to learn together. As you know, we're seeing more edible gardens at school too. There's so much to learn here, and I'm not just talking about agriculture, science and cooking. Gardeners learn about hard work, time management, hope, failure, resilience, persistence and reward. This kind of small-scale farming can also teach us to accept the things that are beyond our control and make what provisions we can to adapt to new circumstances. It's interesting too that even our thinking about farming on a larger scale is changing. Industrial approaches to food production, like industrial approaches to education, are being questioned. Whether it is through regenerative farming or other sustainable practices, we are being asked to think differently about the ways things have been done for so long. To see, as we do in schools, the damage and the waste that comes from a factory approach to schooling. In fact, the wasted potential of children and young people whose needs aren't met at schools is a question of justice. As you know, children and young people in Western Sydney and the Blue Mountains deserve the very best learning and teaching opportunities and support. In a TED talk released just weeks ago, Pope Francis again calls us to go on a journey together, a journey of transformation and of action. I am calling it a journey because it requires a shift, a change, he says. This powerful language reminds me, of course, of our own commitment to transforming the learning of each student and enriching the professional lives of staff within Catholic learning communities. Our own Bishop, Vincent Long, leads in the same spirit his continued exhortation to us to go to the margins and to walk alongside the disempowered will lead to new ways of doing things. Pope Francis reminds us that everything is connected. He too speaks of the need to change the way that we farm food, of the connection between care for our common home, the earth, and our duty to others, especially the vulnerable. He also states education is at the heart of change. As you know, we recently released the updated version of our draft new curriculum for religious education. This approach is full of hope, as our approach to faith and learning should always be. I believe that together we are heading towards new growth and through dreaming together, better times. In the words of Pope Francis again in a recent tweet, education bears within itself a seed of hope. Thank you for everything that you're doing and here's hoping and please enjoy this wonderful symposium.